a holiday on mars steve and sue are visiting the glass dome colonies on planet mars along with biff their family friend now they must return to the spaceship that had brought them to mars the journey from the glass dome to their spaceship only takes 10 minutes on the high speed sleds so they decide to step out and watch the rockets being launched to send fuel to the space ship stationed above the planet in the dressing room they put on their space suits biff carefully checked the siblings air tanks built-in heaters and their helmet radios for talking to one another Outside they found space suited figures gathered around the fuel rocket cannon suddenly the three of them heard a loud roar and saw a burst of flame like a bullet the rocket left the muzzle of the giant gun and rose into the sky they'll be shooting off more biff said our ship is at the end of the canal we'll be able to see the rockets go off as we head back The three went to the canal bank to see if their sled was ready to go and it was. The sled looked like a plane without the wings instead of wheels there were long runners beneath it. Steve, Sue and Biff climbed into the front seat. Biff pushed the buttons in front of them steve and sue felt the sled's engines throbbing the next moment the sled shot off over the smooth sheet of ice biff holding tightly to the steering wheel they sped along at 100 miles an hour we'll be there in about 10 minutes biff said the ship leaves in 30 which gives us some spare time A few minutes later you noted a bright streak against the purple sky there goes another fuel rocket sue called out pointing through the windshield as biff caught sight of it he jerked up sharply in his seat bumping the shoulders of sue and steve on both sides of him that rocket's too low he exclaimed it's not lifting something has gone wrong Steve felt chills run up his spine. He was seeing the danger too. Now, the rocket was dropping ahead of them. It was still quite a distance away, but Steve knew that it would make a terrible blast when it struck the ice. Biff's feet hit the brakes of the sled and the runners chewed into the hard ice pack bringing the sled to a skidding stop the riders were slammed forward sue and steve were dazed but not hurt when steve's mind cleared he saw that biff had thrown himself over in front of sue and him to protect them but in doing this his helmet had thumped against the windshield he was now slumped over and not moving just then they felt the shock of the explosion it tilted the sled at an angle and dropped it down again with a hard jolt the air was filled with flying chunks of ice the ice fell against the windshield like stones sue and steve were relieved when it finally stopped but the explosion had left the ice canal in front of them broken and choked with lumps of ice the children tried to revive their friend but could not We have got to get the sled to the ship ourselves, Sue, her brother said. Biff may need a doctor. At first, it seemed like an impossible thing for a pair of 12-year-olds to run the big sled. But Steve remembered how Biff had worked the controls and he believed he too could do it. He changed the sled. seats with the unconscious spaceman and tried the levers and buttons
The sled's rockets began to pour fire out of the rear, but Steve couldn't get the sled to move. Then Sue showed him the lever to push, which she remembered seeing Biff do. As Steve moved it gently, the sled started off slowly. Steve carefully guided the sled across the canal and through the unbroken path. As he drove, Sue tried to awaken Biff. At last, Steve saw the round top of the spaceship just over the horizon. It was at that moment that Sue called out the good news. Biff is awakening Steve. The boy saw their friend slowly rise up then shake his head to clear it. When he smiled at them in his pleasant way, they were sure that he was going to be alright. By the time they had told him what had happened, he was his old self again. He took the controls and looked at his watch. Time's running out, he said. We have got to hit top speed again. Hold on to your helmets, here we go. And off they went at lightning speed once more as the sled came to a stop beneath the giant spaceship biff said it's look like we are just in time doesn't it kids sue and steve both nodded it was a holiday none of them would ever forget a holiday on mars this is a thrilling science fiction story written by Richard M. Elam, an American author. Richard lived in between 1920 and 2013. He has written lots of science fiction stories for kids. Almost all his stories talk about setting up colonies in space and using spaceship to travel. The story, A Holiday on Mars, is adapted from the book Science Fiction Stories, Chapter 6, Danger on the Ice Canal. The characters are Steve and Sue, 12 years old twins, and Mr. Biff, their family friend. Now, the theme of the story, Steve and Sue have just completed a visit to the glass dome colonies in Mars where their father works. Mr. Biff also works there. Now, it is time for them to go back to Earth after their holidays. They are waiting for their spaceship which is just a few kilometers away. They need to travel by a sled through the ice canal to reach to the spaceship. The story explains the wonderful things they saw and the hardships faced during this short trip. Now listen to the story. Steve and Sue went to the dressing room to put on their specially crafted suit for the trip. Mr. Biff did a thorough check and made sure of each and every detail. They got amazed to see a huge rocket moving out of the muzzle of the giant rocket gun and rising into the sky. These are the rockets that carry fuel to the spaceships. It looked like a giant bullet. The children were excited and wanted to see more and Mr. Biff assured them that they will be able to see more rockets as they head to the spaceship. Three of them moved to the ice canal bank where their sled is ready. It looked like an airplane without wings. It had long runners in place of wheels. These runners helped the sled to move through the ice canal. They got into the sled and Mr. Biff operated the control panel in front of him. The children could feel the force of the engine as it got started. He held the steering wheel tightly and they began their journey through the ice canal to their spaceship. The sled sped along a hundred miles per hour and they expected to reach their destination within 10 minutes. It was so thrilling to enjoy such a great speed on a sled. Soon, Sue noted a fuel rocket shooting off to the sky. She was so excited to see the fuel rocket. But Mr. Biff was not that happy to see it. He sensed a danger in front of them. Steve too felt the same. 
out of shock, Mr. Biff lost presence of mind for a few seconds and jerked up sharply in his seat. But he took control of the sled and said that the rocket is not lifting and is flying too low. Steve got more frightened to hear this because the rocket is just moving in the same direction ahead them. It was about to drop just ahead, quite a distance away. Steve anticipated a big crash of the rocket in the ice canal. Meanwhile, Mr. Biff tried to control the sled by kicking a sudden brake. As the brake was hit, the runners chewed into the ice and brought the sled to a skidding stop. Due to the force, all three of them slammed forward. The kids were in shock but not hurt. Soon they realized what happened and looked at Mr. Biff. He was lying unconscious in front of them. They tried to awake him but could not make it. All of a sudden they heard a sound of terrible explosion and the aftershock of the explosion of the fuel rocket gave a strong violent kick on the sled. Soon the entire place was filled with chunks of ice. It fell on the windshield of the sled like stones. Everything got over within a few minutes time and soon the kids got relieved of their worries. But now another trouble came up. The explosion left the canal broken and it got blocked with huge pieces of ice. Now the kids saw Mr. Biff still lying unconscious and they have only few minutes to reach to their spaceship. They tried to wake him up but he did not. The children felt that Mr. Biff might need a doctor's help and decided to take the sled by themselves. They shifted Mr. Biff to another seat and took control of the sled. Steve tried whatever he saw Mr. Biff doing when they began their journey. Suddenly, they could start the engine and the rocket of the sled emitted fire. But the sled did not move. Soon, Sue remembered of the lever and asked Steve to push the lever. As he moved it, the sled started off slowly. Steve guided the sled very carefully through the unbroken part of the canal. Meanwhile, Sue tried to awake Mr. Biff. As they moved, they could see the round top of the spaceship from very far, just over the horizon. At the same moment, Sue gave the good news that Mr. Biff is awakening. Soon he became okay and smiled at the children in his usual way. He took control of the sled and asked the kids to hold on tightly. The sled moved at a lightning speed and reached near the spaceship just in time. It was a holiday none of them would ever forget.